Not everybody has access to a real drummer or a live drum room, and sometimes using loops or MIDI files can be a bit uninspiring or just a bit static. This is where Jamsticks comes into its own, and in my opinion it's the closest thing to playing along with a real drummer. The Jamsticks VSTi allows you to work in four different ways. The first way is just straightforward jam with no input. Jam with audio input means you can play either a guitar or a bass, and Jamsticks listens to the dynamics of your playing and responds accordingly. Jam with MIDI works in a similar fashion as well. And then there's drum module mode, which is more like a standard drum sample playback engine. You can create a playlist of parts in Jamsticks. Also, there's a pool of drummers, models based on real drummers, from what I understand. These are the templates for the various jam sessions you can use. And there's a selection of different styles you can use to get you up and running. Blues, Afro-Cuban, Brazilian, Breakbeat, Motown, Metal, Jazz Swing, all sorts of styles. Also, there's ways of manipulating accents and fills. Then there's the groove window where you can change all sorts of parameters, including the power complexity, the bias, the amount, the pocket, timing variations, all sorts of things to make the performance more human sounding. And the good thing is it doesn't get drunk or steal your girlfriend, so that's an added bonus. But the main thing is to show you how Samplitude and Jamsticks can work together and the possibilities which this affords. So I'm going to open Jamsticks from the plugin slot by left clicking and there it is in the VST list, Jamsticks 2. The next thing is to select multi-channel, create new tracks for instrument outputs, all as stereo. We're going to have eight stereo outputs. These two parameters don't need to be ticked. Click OK. And there it is, opened up very quickly. Now I'm going to load up what they call a jam session. I think we'll go for reggae. Something nice and laid back and not too intense. You can see along the bottom the stock kit is being loaded. This comes as standard with the program. Splash, China, there's a shaker there. That's the sounds all loaded. And if you look under drummer, it says Stuart. And if you left click, you'll get a list of available players, all with um, fairly cryptic names. I'm sure you can guess who some of them are. Isn't Animal the drummer in the Muppets or something? Or maybe it's the drummer in Motorhead, who knows? This controller adjusts the power, so I'll have that set to 127. So let's have a quick listen and see if it's working. As you can see, it synchronizes to the host's time signature and tempo. It can also play multiple time signatures up to 13.8. So that's nice if you want to do something a bit different. Next thing to do is left click where it says kit, and that opens a window. And there you have a nice picture of a drum kit. Then you can audition the sounds with your mouse. Snare, bass drum, you've got five toms. There's cymbals and various rides and crashes. And some percussion as well. A shaker there, an egg, a cowbell, tambourine. Next thing to do is click where it says mixer and check you have the right number of audio outputs. We have eight at the moment, which is correct because we're going to use eight stereo outputs. If there's less than the amount you need, you'll have to reset it and then reopen the plugin. I'll go to the kit window again, left click and click on the downward green arrow and select the output routing I want to use, which is eight stereo outs. If I right click on any of the drums, it opens a routing window where I can check the various routings for the individual drum pieces. Let's see, we got kick to output one and snares to output two. Hi-hat going to channel four, ride to channel five. Crash to six, splash to six as well. China to six. Notice they all have ambience controls as well. So we've got toms going to channel 3. The toms are spread left to right, appropriately. That can be adjusted at any time. Then we have the percussion going to 7. And all the ambience should go out through stereo channel 8. Just to make sure, left click on the mixer tab again. And there you can see the ambience setting. Make sure you have send to last enabled. That means it will go to the last channel which is the eighth stereo channel. 
and you can also adjust damping, shape and width. Move the plug in upwards a bit. Open the mixer from the mixer tab. So now I can left click on the drums to make sure they're coming out of the right channels in samplitude. So here we go. Kick coming out of one, snare two, toms out of three. Notice they're coming out the ambient channel as well. Cymbals, crash and chinas coming out of six they should be. There's a ride coming out of five, only one ride. More chinas, you can never have enough chinas. There's a hi-hat there coming out of four. It's all looking good. More crashes. So now I need to quickly rename the mixer channels to correspond with the drums. Well, not that quick when it comes to me typing anyway. So that's kick. Next is snare. Toms. Hats. Ride. Cymbals. Actually, I forgot to audition the percussion channels, but I'm sure it's fine. There you go, percussion. And last but not least, ambience. So let's give it a whirl and see what it sounds like. That's the ambience mics soloed. adjust the power of the kick and also complexity of the snare well it's rim shot really isn't it lots of adjustments you can make there quite easily needs experimenting bit of reverb I do like the room simulator I must admit Nice bit of ecox. God, he almost fell off his stool there. Incidentally, that mixer skin is part of the Alloy Skin Suite Dual Row Mixer, which is handy for limited screen space. It would be nicer to have a controller to do all the soloing. You can be a bit more creative rather than just doing it with the mouse. This is ammunition complete with helicopter pull back the mix knob a bit that ammunition definitely adds a bit of punch Tom's need a bit of working on So the next thing to do is just drag and drop the part onto the MIDI track in Samplitude and Jamsticks has very cleverly created a MIDI file of that 60 bar or so section. Then just click on the downward arrow to go into drum module mode so it becomes a drum sample player. So now you're hearing the playback from the MIDI file which has been generated from Jamsticks itself. Very convenient. The beauty of this is now you have the MIDI file in the arrange page. It's then possible to assign it to a general MIDI drum map. Then double click on the MIDI object or you can click the MIDI editor tab and there you are in the drum editor ready to do some editing. Don't forget to click loop on the transport as well then you can draw in a loop and work on a looped section for editing. The drum editor is one of my favourite things about Samplitude. Change it to 16 triplets. And grab the pencil tool. You can add a few more notes in on the hi-hat by left clicking. Right clicking on a note deletes it. The higher the note, the higher the velocity. I always find varying the velocity is very good if you're working with hi-hats. Gives it a bit more feel. And the more velocity levels the samples have, the better. This is really just to give you a taster of what's possible. 
with this combination of samplitude and jam sticks. It's a beautiful piece of work, this drum editor, as far as I'm concerned. So that's it, samplitude and jam sticks. Nice combination, I would say. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, goodbye.